Family Affairs contributor, Dr. Dan Gottlieb. Dr. Dan, so many times couples come in who are divorcing, and when we find out why they're divorcing, and I'm sure you experience this when you work with couples, a main reason why couples divorce and why they get in that situation is because of financial reasons. They either don't agree on finances, they have different expectations about money, what money means to them, different spending habits. You'll always realize that people deal with money differently. So in thinking about our conversation today, I came to realize that you know money means different things to different people. And even in just looking at, you know, close circle of friends and family, for some people, money means security. And people hold money in high regard. Other people, money is just a thing. It affords them to do what they would like. So, is this something, what money means to us, is it something that's taught to us? Yes. Is it learned? Yes. Okay. And can we change our outlook? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about The reason I'm giving you my <laughs> syllabic answers because <coughs> as you were talking, mm -hmm. I realized I've been doing this for a few months, you know, thinking about these, donating the time. The time I get paid for this. <laughs> My smile's not enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'll have to be. But, you know, on, on a serious note, money is, money is never about money, you know. Right. So, yeah, for, for many, money is about security. Mm -hmm. For others, money is about power. It's always symbolic. And, and, you know, I was just thinking as I was joking with you, Money can also be about ethics. Mm -hmm. You know, what is my value in the workplace? So if somebody were to, you know, want to see me and for free, I feel my value is more than that, you know? So it's not about money, it's about how valuable we experience ourselves. Mm -hmm and how we want to be seen. So it's all those things. But, all right, as you implied, money is never money. The thing is never the thing. It's always about what it means. And you say most couples divorce about money, and that's what the research shows, but uh, I don't think so. There's problems in the relationship way before the money issues. Right. They'll, they'll use that as the excuse. Yeah. I remember years ago I worked with a couple and they were getting a divorce on their own. So they came in... To, you mean they were filing for their own divorce? They weren't going through attorneys or mediators or... None of the above. Okay. They were doing it on their own and it was ethical and moral and they worked with me. And mm -hmm. So it came time to divide the furniture to go through the house and divide everything. And they asked me to come along. It was before my, my accident, so I could walk up their steps with them. We went through the house and everything was fine. You know, you take that, I'll take that. The whole process has been that way. And then we got to one ashtray. <laughs> and her mother gave it to him, but it was her mother that gave it. Everything almost blew up. Because of the ashtray. Well, yeah. not about the ashtray. No. No, it's about what it means to us. So, money is about trust. It's about the illusion that if we have enough, then we'll be secure. You know, I love the story of D.H. Lawrence is the rocking horse winner. I don't know if you recall it. So it was one of your short stories. And, and I forget his name, Timothy, had a mother 
that's not his name, but had a mother who, as, as D.H. Lawrence said, had a hole in her heart and couldn't love properly. Oh, it's called the Whispering Walls. Anyway, um, so he felt, and the family felt, we must have more money. That's the problem. We must have. So he was able to get on his rocking horse, rock himself into a trance, come up with the name of a horse that would win, give the name to his uncle, his uncle would bet the horse, and money started coming in. But it wasn't enough. So he'd rock himself more and more. And one day he rocked himself into a trance so deeply that he died. He sacrificed his life. So what good was the money? How much is enough? Right. How much do you need and what do you need it for? Mm -hmm. Is it for security? Okay, I get that. But what kind of security are you looking for? Walls and a fence outside your house or a big car? Or is it an internal kind of security that we ache for our whole lives? Mm -hmm. Money's not going to get you that. You know, they say over, I think it's fifty or $80,000. Money doesn't buy you more happiness after that. Below that, you need money for, for security. But, you know, security that we long for, that's internal. And what happens between couples is they might both be looking for the same thing, but not know it, not know it, and each feels threatened by the other. So they're not finding that security within each other. So they're blaming it on the money, but right. they don't have enough money and they're not secure and... Well, often, you know, I hate to be gender specific here, but he will say, you know, she spends too much. Right. And she will say, he's a tightwad. And what's happening is he feels threatened because she's spending the money that he feels he needs. Mm -hmm. And she feels threatened because she feels like he's putting her in handcuffs. You know, and Do you feel it's a bit of a gender issue in that men are more defined by money oh, because yeah. of the career status it gives them? The more money a man makes, the more important he is, the more important of a job that he has? Oh, ab absolutely. Look, male identity is about power. I mean, the, you know, let's take that back a few million years. Mm -hmm. We didn't have power. You know, we wouldn't have survived and our families wouldn't have survived. It's about power. And, you know, these days, money represents power. power. Of course, it doesn't because... It's a false sense of power. Real power, I've learned in my life, real power comes when you're comfortable with your powerlessness. Easier said than done. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Gottlieb. Thank you. Another great discussion. Always.